all right guys in this video we'll take a look at how to create a key and a door system in unreal engine and for this we'll use a third person template as you can see in the video uh, there is a character trying to you know go through a door and then now with the key they can actually enter inside okay to get started what we'll do is we'll go to the third person template uh, which you can find on the games tab and then I'll just give a name called door to it and make sure the blueprint is selected and let's go ahead and create and yeah it will take some time to create and we have our uh, game right here and if I were to just play you'll see I can move the character around jump around you know with the WASD key but we'll create the door uh, blueprint so to get started what i will do is i'll create a new folder called blueprints and inside the blueprint we'll go ahead and select a blueprint class of actor type and then let's give it a name bp underscore door or name whatever you want uh, it's just a blueprint name and as you can see the blueprint is pretty empty and we just need to add some component so we'll add the door and the door frame to this blueprint. To get started, we'll do, I'll go ahead and click add, and then type in a static mesh. And then I can just give a name, uh, door frame. And under detail panel, go to the static mesh and then type in a door frame again. And you'll find SM underscore door frame, uh, which is actually a star content in Unreal Engine by default now we'll do the same thing for the door so let's go ahead and click on add and type in the static mesh and then let's rename it to door and then with that door selected under the detail panel on our static mesh i'll go ahead and type door and it should be sm underscore door as you can see by default it doesn't align so what i will do is i'll use the gizmo handle to align and then for that i might turn off that snapping mode and then i'm just checking to see if the door is aligned basically you can ballpark with your eye for this portion now we'll compile this save it and we can test it out in our map so i'll basically uh, drag this blueprint and i'll hit play and I'll see and you can see that actually the player can enter through the door so there is some issue with the door probably the there is a mission collider in the door and we'll try to add that and also we might set the collision profile so to do that I will select the door and I'll underneath the detail panel I'll go ahead and then under the collision presets uh, make sure you select the block all and we'll compile save and then we'll do the same thing for our door frame as well so the same way underneath the detail collision presets we'll just do block all and then we'll save compile and test it out and still the door is not blocking so there's some issue and actually this was on purpose I wanted you to learn the steps of creating it so actually the door is missing a collider in the mesh itself so we'll select the door under and we'll go to the static mesh and we'll double click this sm underscore door now what we'll do is uh, under the collision we'll go ahead and select the box simplified collision and then you can see there's a collider on the blue or uh, green color now we'll go ahead and you know uh, play the map and see if the player enters now i can't so that means the collision is working for us now for this portion what we want to do is we want to actually create a, a key blueprint in which when the player touches the key then the key gets disappeared so i'll start with the blueprint class actor and then let's name it bp underscore key and then we'll double click on it and then we'll do the same thing basically we'll try to add a key for us we can just add a spear for a key 
and for the size I'll just go ahead and put it to uh, maybe 0.2 you know and then you can save this and bring it to the level and test it out to see if that actually is the right size so you can drag the blue BP underscore key and click on play and you can see this is actually a size of key which is good and if you have a 3d model you can actually use that 3d model in place of the spear I just didn't have so I just went with the spear um, and next thing what we want to do is uh, we want to add some sort of trigger to the spear that means we when the player collide we want the player to collide on something and so that's why we need to add a spear collider so I'll go ahead and add a spear collide collision and yeah let's maybe change the size of this spear collider as well let's change the size of the collider to be something reasonable that we can use maybe two or four or three whatever you feel like and then we'll compile and then we'll go back to the map and you can see there's a collider in it now we actually need to create a logic uh, uh, the actual coding portion and to do that what we can do is with the spear collider selected we'll go to detail panel and you know we what we want to do is we want to select the uncomponent begin overlap and would click uh, click on plus and uh, if the other component other actor actually is bp underscore third person character uh, so uh, th that's why i'm doing a cast to third person character so i want this key to disappear only when the third person touches it and nobody else and how do i know if it's a third person or first person for me i use the third person template but for you what you can do is go to your wall settings and then right there you can see you know my default pawn class is third person character that's why I use the third person character for casting make sure you use whatever you have by default okay now we have the third person you know cast it and then the logic is when the third person you know touches me now what do I want to do then I want to destroy myself. Basically, this is a logic from the key. You know, when a third person that is a character touches the key, then disappear the key. And what we can do is compile, save, and we can test out the logic. And as you can see, when the player goes close to the key, then key disappears. That means our code is working perfectly fine. Now, what we need to do is, uh, we actually need to create a logic for the third person character itself so I went to the third person character which you can find under star template and I want to actually add a variable called has key uh, just so that third person there's some logic of testing we are doing to make sure that the player has a key so I'll go ahead and click on add variable and, and then the has key and it will be of boolean type and when you compile it by default the has key is false which makes sense uh, you know the, when the player the when the level starts we don't want the player to have key now uh, let's go to the bp underscore key and now what we can do is we can actually from the we can bring out the logic from the third person character and then we can say you know set key uh, to be true so basically when the player touches the key then we want to set the logic of the player having the key to be true and that's what we are doing right here so we are basically setting the player to get the key to be true we can also for our debugging purpose we can add a, a logic you know by using a print statement saying that I'll just go ahead and type print string and then I'll just say player has the key or you can say has tree to be true whatever you feel like so this is basically for you to test out the logic we can use a print statement to check the logic within the level and this is an excellent way to actually debug your code as well by using print statement and as you can see on the top 
left corner you could see again I'm testing here doing here you can see the when I go ahead and play the level um, in the top right corner top left corner sorry you can see the player has the key the statement is printed that means our logic is working now we need to add a rotation to the door and to do that we'll go to BP underscore the door we'll go to event graph we will right click and then add a timeline node so basically timeline node helps us to create the animation system for the door and we'll just name it our door open you can double click on it and I will create an animation for one second so I'll go ahead and click on the plus to the track and then add a float type because we are only animating on one value which is the the Z value of the door so I'll go ahead and name this as door rotation or whatever you feel like you can name it and then the very first start of the curve I'll go ahead and click add key and then make sure the time is to zero and the value is zero and then go to the end of it add another key um, and make sure the the time is 1 and the value is 90 and you might be like how did you come up with that 1 and 90 um, basically 1 and 90 is the logic that I'm using based off on the the door so if you were to go on the viewport and select the door and we are basically rotating the door on the z-axis uh, or yaw if you want to use that so that's what we are doing that's how I came up with the value of 0 and 90. Now we'll go to the third person, uh, you know, the map. Only thing we, what we want to do is we want to add some trigger to the door so that when the player steps on it, then we are checking to see if the door, the player has a key. If it has a key, then we'll basically, you know, let the, the animation play it. So we'll, I'll go ahead and add a box collider and that would be like a trigger uh, to check to see if the player is within its vicinity. So maybe I can change the size to be, you know, four by four. So this is the field of influence that we are checking for the player. And yeah, make sure the box is selected and we'll do again on, you know, component begin overlap uh, for the collider and when the uh, so basically same thing we want to do in here as well the logic is hey if the other actor or if if it's the player that is stepping on my boundary basically uh, we want to do something and that something would be you know opening the door you know but we want to check for the logic if the, that player also has a key. So this time we'll do get has key. And um, uh, we also had that, you know, the door, um, the open door animation system, that timeline that we had earlier. But we want to open the door only if the player has the key. So to do that, we'll add a branch statement. So basically type if and that would be the ifs <coughs> branching now the logic would be having a key if they have a key then we want to basically if it's true then we'll you know do something or that it do something is basically opening the door if not we'll say hey get the key or something like that and then to change the you know the rotation of the door we'll select the set relative rotation of the door and um, I only want to change the Z position of the door. So for that, you know, you can go to that rotation and right click on it and then, you know, split the struct. So you can view all X, Y and Z value and then we'll plug that door rotate to that uh, Z within the uh, set relative rotation. Now, uh, this is the logic for a true condition. Now, if it's false, then we can basically say, hey, print the, uh, you know, print saying, hey, go get the key. Or a player doesn't have a key, you know. So this is the overall logic for creating the whole level. So now we can go ahead and play. And if 
the player goes, he, it says, hey, go get the key. You don't have a key. You know, same thing. I can't jump through it. I can't walk through it. Okay. Now, if I were to go and grab that key, um, the door opens. And my key was actually within the field. So let's change this position and we can, you know, test it out and see it. Yep, of course, the door doesn't open. Now, if I go in there, yep. And then, voila, the door opens. And there you have it. In Unreal Engine, now you can create your own door and key system. Let me know if you have any comments, concerns, or anything else you would like to see. Until then, stay cool. I'll see you in the next one.